Hello, everyone. My name is Beth Bedore, and I am the founder of this kidney support group. And guess what it's called? Best Kidney Support Group. And most of the time, you can find me on Facebook. We tend to meet the first Tuesday of every month at seven o'clock for about 45 minutes Eastern Standard Time. And you do need a link to the Zoom meeting. You just can't jump in on a Facebook Live. So that's very important. And um, I did say it's Eastern Standard Time, yes. So today I'm super jazzed. <laughs> we have Michelle Drains and she is with us today. And she gave me a bio to tell a little bit about herself. And a lot of these things I know and some of the things I was surprised about. So with no further ado, I'm gonna introduce her and I'm gonna tell you about what's going on with her. She has been passionate about herbal medicine and the natural world for a very long time. She founded a practice that's in Raleigh now, and it's called River Bish. Is that how you pronounce it? No, it's um, River Birch, like the tree. Birch, Birch okay. okay. And that's the practice that I founded in Concord, the Concord area. Oh, great. Yes. And um, I will tell the people that are following us today, one of the ways that I learned about Michelle was we both had a private practice in Concord in the same building. So we weren't together, but I had a women's health pelvic floor program and it was called Creative Health, what is that? Creative Living by Design. And now mm -hmm. my company is called The Creative Life by Design. I had to add that the in front of it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the ways that we know one another. She um, recently, we were just talked about going to um, Raleigh and um, she has dedicated and created a lifelong community of people that she enjoys connecting with on an individual basis. And she guides their journey to optimal health. And uh, guess what she does in her spare time? This is another way that we have connected over the years. Dance, 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 dancing. So um, we both do belly dancing. We both have taught belly dancing. We both have performed and some other interesting things that I always wanted to get more involved in. I only took one or two classes is Polynesian and hula dancing. That's very exciting. And I've also done a little bit with what she has been doing in um, Indian style dancing. I even had a, what do they call it? A sari? Is that yeah. the type of dress that they wear? I even had yeah, those. Sorry, one of well, I had two. I had two at one point in time and I ended up giving both away at some point in time. And now I kind of wish I had them, but you can always go and get more. <laughs> so um, I just love that all about her and what I'm trying to bring, what I am bringing to this forum is not only Western medicine, Eastern medicine, and what do other cultures do to deal with the kidney disease? You know, how do they deal with it? How is it the same and how is it different? So a lot of the groups that I've been involved with is mostly just Western medicine. And if you start to talk about what you do and what your business is and how that can help with kidneys and kidney patients, they kind of say, mm, that's not for that here. This is just to talk about the story, your own journey going through it. So um, I had decided to bring Michelle on because she has a different version that some of the Western medicine explains. And she probably integrates some of that, but I'll let her discuss that with you. And I always premise it, no matter what I bring to this forum, you don't dive into it. You can get educated on it, but don't do it without letting your team know, especially if you're on a transplant um, list and you're trying to get a kidney, you're working towards getting a kidney. They're very, very specific on what you can do and what you can't do. And guess what I say? You always have a choice in life and your choice is either you follow that regimen and you can get a kidney possibly, let's keep our fingers and toes crossed. Or you say, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to get a mammogram. I, I don't want to eat that kind of diet. And you know what they'll say? Well, then this program's not for you, honey. So with Michelle here, I'm going to let her introduce herself and tell us more about her natural health. Hey, well, thank you for introducing me. I'm going to share my screen now. Let me see. Okay, let me know if it turns out. Okay. I can see it says started to share screen. 
There we go. I see it. And I see a lot of stuff above it and beside it. Okay, let me fix that. Now I see your beautiful face again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Heidi. These yeah. are things I'm going to have to learn too along the way. Yes, I'm, it's like I am not podcasting and interviewing and all that kind of jazz. Okay, let's go. It said it started, so it's here. Um, click to add notes. No, you don't need to do that. Aha! Are you seeing? You it? done figured it out. <laughs> yes. Yay! Okay. How about now? Are you seeing? I'm seeing a holistic approach to kidney health. And that's what we're doing today. Okay, perfect. Do you see notes? I'm trying to make sure everything shows up right. Okay. Um, I see your name down below and okay. naturopathic doctor, okay. clinical herbalist. Herbal. Okay. <laughs> I can't even say it. I'll let you say it. Um, okay. Yeah, that's what I see right now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> now that the tech stuff is out of the way. That's right. Um, Yes, I am uh, Dr. Michelle Drains. I am a naturopathic uh, physician and clinical herbalist. And um, I'm gonna talk to you all today a, a little bit about uh, 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 my holistic approach to kidney health um, and just give you a little bit of background of how I started as a naturopathic doctor. Um, I grew up in Queens County, New York. Um, I have always been very passionate about botanical medicine and herbs in the natural world. My family's background is in um, uh, is, is Cherokee and Quopo uh, tribal background. So I grew up around using plants as medicine, using alternative medicine and eating well fruits and vegetables before it was <laughs> eating pretty healthy before it was considered a thing it is now. Um, our medicine came from the earth, the sky and the sea. That's just, and, and, and the mind. Um, and so growing up, um, back in the early nineties, late eighties, you know, when everyone asks you, what do you want to be when you get older? Um, I, my first, uh, thing was I wanted to be a farmer. And the reason that is, is because I was really passionate about herbs and working in the dirt and growing these things for people to use as medicine. And back then it's like, what can you, what career could you turn that into? So it was farming. And then that um, passion developed into possibly going in botanical and going into botany. And then I wanted to, got, became interested in going into pharmacognosy, which is the study of turning these plants into medications. So it's a little bit on the opposite side <laughs> of things. Um, but a family friend had given me a, book on naturopathic medicine. I read through it and I, I loved it. I went back to her and I said, wait, I can actually go to medical school, be trained as a primary care doctor and still be able to help people um, in both in natural medicine, kind of have my foot in both ponds, as to say. Um, and she told me, yes, you, of course you can do that. There are different avenues to do this. And at first I was like, wait, this doesn't seem right. So I did my own research in the time pre-Google. So you actually had to go to a library to work to research and look anything up. And I had to go to the source to find a natural path that um, was in my area. And so after doing they, that research and speaking with other people, um, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. So I knew as early as junior high that this is what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And so everything kind of lined up from there. I did my undergraduate work at uh, Delaware Valley University in Pennsylvania in biology and botanical in, in botanical sciences and I minored in psych and then I was able to had the privilege of studying naturopathic medicine at University of Bridgeport and then I also studied uh, advanced nutrition there as well to get a master's and I always wanted to expand my studies as far as with herbal medicine what I what I got into in the first place and so right now I'm a part of that of the herbal medicine cohort with Dr. Tierna Lodog. Um, so I can become a registered herbalist. Um, I also had the opportunity to study and to practice primary care in Salem, Oregon um, for a couple of years. So I was actually able to be a primary care doctor. Um, and in 2014, I founded my practice River Birch Holistic Health in Concord, North Carolina. And right now, um, back in August, I had the opportunity and I joined a uh, uh, integrative practice in here in Raleigh now uh, called BMI Wellness Concepts. And in practice, I, my big focus is on women's health and hormone balance. 
I work a lot with digestive issues, so current metabolic issues, um, immune support, and also wellness for dancers and performing because of my dancers and performers because of my background and understanding the challenges that that we face. And so a little disclaimer, um, like uh, Beth had mentioned earlier, you know, the information in this presentation is not to, or not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. All content, including text, graphics, images, information contained or available through this presentation is for educational purposes only. And you wanna make sure, um, you know, you always check with your healthcare provider before implementing any type of health changes. You always wanna make sure to see what, what, what therapies will be best for you and for your body and to make sure that your team knows about it as well. And so I'm gonna talk a bit about uh, the next few minutes about naturopathic, a little bit about naturopathic medicine, what naturopathic medicine is, you know, overview just the basics of kidney function and, and kidney and bladder function strategies for success and support, and also a little bit of helpful botanicals as well. So a naturopathic approach, uh, naturopathic medicine is actually a distinct and separate healthcare system. Um, and it uses safe and effective natural therapies. Our methods are a combination of modern, traditional, scientific, and empirical. So naturopathic uh, practitioners combined conventional medicine and more traditional methods as well, because we're trained in both. We're trained as primary care doctors. So we understand a lot about that in that conventional world, but we can also cater to those who want more of the natural, that natural path or that natural focus be, beyond pharmaceutical. We like to focus on correcting the causes of the disease and not just covering up symptoms. And we're governed by six naturopathic principles, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And again, we use a combination of various different healing modalities that I'll talk about too. So our six principles of naturopathic medicine, these are the six principles that we that guide everything we do in practice. We have to take in oh, the Hippocratic Oath and then we have to take a naturopathic oath as well, which includes adherence and understanding of these principles too. So the first you know, is no different than what a conventional doctor will aim or strive to do, which is first do no harm. So we want to utilize the most natural, least invasive, and least toxic therapies. We want to also identify and treat the causes. So we want to look beyond what symptoms may be causing that, you know, that underlying cause. So we want to look, get a deeper dive into what's going on. We also acknowledge that there is a healing power of nature, that the body has a wonderful ability to heal itself, but sometimes it just needs a kick in the right direction, and we try to be that kick. Um, you know, and also we love the doctor as a teacher. So our goal is to educate patients into, you know, maintaining their own health and achieving whatever health goals there are. So, you know, the same word for, you know, the root word for doctor is docere, which in Latin, which also means teacher. So we really like to educate patients and clients so that way they can also educate their families. And by also educating their families, they're educating their community members too. So this holistic medicine is widespread. Again, we wanna treat the whole person. So we view the person as just not, you know, uh, the whole person, not just the condition. So we view the body as an integrated whole in its physical and spiritual dimension. So we're treating the mind, the body, the spirit, and also the environment, and also now a bit of the genetics too. Um, and we also acknowledge that prevention is, is uh, sometimes our best care. So we want to focus on overall health, wellness, and also um, positive actions that are taken today that can have a profound influence on somebody's health. It's never too late to start taking pro proactive actions toward health. Sometimes the first step towards prevention is just starting, you know, starting a conversation with someone who can help guide you towards your better health goals. We kind of talked about this, but you know, again, we're trying to tra train as uh, primary care doctors. We really take to heart the our, those philosophical teachings, the healing power of nature. We're trained in various different clinical therapeutics, and um, again, we we everything we do is individualized towards the person, the individual person. For instance, ten people may walk into my office with diabetes, but they're leaving with ten totally different plans because everyone's different. No one's cookie cutter. And these are examples of the different healing modalities that 
that we're trained in and that we, we may choose to use. So um, we're trained in physical medicine, physical medicine being similar to chiropractic manipulation, um, oriental medicine, so acupuncture, um, Chinese dietetics, homeopathy, uh, midwifery, um, uh, in certain state, we're trained in minor office procedures and, pres and prescribing drugs as well. Um, it just depends on what state you we're able to practice in. So um, in Oregon, I was a primary care doctor. So I can do everything your primary care doctor um, was able to do. Um, a lot of people would want to come to an MD versus an ND versus an MD or DO because they want that more natural approach first. Then if we need to do something deeper, then we can. Um, but in North Carolina, unfortunately, can't do that, but it doesn't hinder any way that I can practice. Um, we're also trained in lifestyle counseling, lifestyle and nutrition counseling, dietetics, uh, botanical medicines, which is my first love, um, mind body medicine, energy healing, and also hydrotherapy as well, and of many others too. Basically, anything that's in our in our toolkit um, that's natural is going to help us get you well. And a little bit about our educational background, because that's often a question that I get a lot. Um, again, we're trained in the same way as uh, conventional medical doctors. The only thing that dif that's differs is that we spend a lot of more time on nutrition and more alternative medicine. So you need a, a prequisite as a bachelor's degree in, in, sci in, a, in a science or pre-med. Then you have to go to a uh, naturopathic medical school. And then that includes years of clinical rotation and a residency. Um, our office visits are usually gonna be a much longer as well. Uh, we spend a lot of time with patients. That quick 15-minute visit that you may get with your conventional doctor does not give us a lot of information. So the more information we know about you, the more we can better help you. And so, you know, again, healing philosophy is like what we talked about before. Everything's individualized and based on uh, based off of you and your you and we use a whole person approach. So just you know, the kidney bladder basics. Uh, it's and most of you already know this, but again, I just put this out here. Uh, the kidney is responsible for filtering waste products, excess water, and other impurities out of the blood. These toxins are stored in the bladder and they're removed through uh, during urination. Kidneys function. It helps to regulate P our pH balance, salt, and potassium levels in the body. It also helps um, to control the um, produce hormones that regulate blood pressure and also control the production of red blood cells. And it's an, also a vital step in the formation of vitamin D, which also impacts, again, vitamin D amounts in our, in our bloodstream and our bodies, but also can impact calcium formation as well. So they're super basic. These are just things that are important to keep in mind with, with the kidney and also with bladder. Um, and again, when these systems are out of balance is when we have a problem. And so our holistic approach um, as naturopathic doctors, you know, everyone kind of approaches things in a little bit different, but, you know, first we always want to get to the bottom of what's causing um, any type of kidney damage. So, um, you know, we look at possibly looking at nourishing tonic support. And when I mean tonic support, usually these are going to be our tonic herbs that we'll talk about in a little bit that help to nourish the the kidney, our bladder, our urinary tract, but also they help to nourish our blood, our bone, and our body's ability to detoxify. So there are certain botanicals that we'll use that have an overall tonic effect. Uh, we'll also look at things that help to support sleep. Um, so we look, may look at adaptogens, soothing herbs, and sleep hygiene. Um, and then again, we want to address any type of underlying causes. So to get to the bottom of any type of Anything that may be causing kidney damage, if it's diabetes, we wanna get that under control. If it's hypertension, we wanna control that. And if it's one of the inflammatory kidney diseases such as IgA nephropathy, uh, sclerosis or minimal change, we wanna bring down that inflammation. Um, so when it comes to hypertension, we're gonna look at, I'm gonna look at things like stress management, adrenal support, certain botanicals to help with that and other things to help support the cardiovascular system. When it comes to diabetes, we wanna look at mitigating that diet, so low glycemic, um, looking at lifestyle changes and support of supplementation to make sure that insulin was, is working right and that you know everything is working where it needs to be. Um, when the kidney is inflamed, there's um, often a loss of protein in the urine. So the urine kind of will look foamy and when that happens, it's easy to know if, you're, if the re reducing inflammation is working. Um, because it'll be less foamy. So we want to adopt a, a diet that has lots of different fresh fruits and vegetables, 
um, and to avoid saturated fats and, and fried foods. I'll look at natural inflammatories, anti-inflammatory diets, um, things like quercetin, bromelain, fish oil um, to help to reduce that inflammation too. And we also want to look at things that'll help repair any damage that's been done or that's in the process. So looking at um, helping with cellular energy to help to repair those cells, um, I'll often go for um, uh, high doses of CoQ10 L-carnitine, which, which helps to um, help to the remaining nephrons work a little harder to keep, uh, to help them work, um, re reduce any fatigue from them overworking. Um, so the CoQ10 and L-carnitine is to supply energy on a cellular level to those nephron membranes. Um, and this helps to support the remaining nephrons and keeping up with any body, the body's demands. Um, I also like to look at heart protection as well. Heart failure or heart issues are often a complication of like the kidney disease process. So we might look at using things like Hawthorne, which is cardioprotective and it helps to regulate pump and it helps to provide food and nourishment to the muscles of the heart, but also to the circulatory system. Um, also green tea helps to regulate uh, bun levels and bioflavonoids to strengthen blood vessels as well. Um, and if someone does dialysis, that tends to be very hard on blood vessels too. So bioflavonoids are often very important for that process. So um, sometimes, and there are certain foods that are limited. So I do tell people, you know, tell you with a caveat, check with your dietitian or your provider to see what's going to be best for you. Um, but sometimes I'll recommend foods that are going to be higher in bioflavonoids that are going to be okay, such as berries, which are going to be all right. And these are some of my tonic um, botanicals or my botanicals with, with impact. These are going to be herbs that are going to help to nourish and support the kidney and the urinary tract. So a lot of these functions, they have either a tonic function or the anti-inflammatory or their um, antimicrobial, or they're going to be called what we call vulnery. And vulnery is a really old, is an older word for, it just helps to soothe any type of inflamed tissue. Um, so Althea officinalis, um, my best friend, Marshmallow, not the candy, but the actual plant, um, is very helpful for soothing irritations of the kidney and the bladder. So usually I'll often recommend that in a, uh, the root infusion, usually as a tea, um, and it also helps as a diuretic too in certain con conditions. Um, again, that demulcent or emollient, another word for soothing, helps to soothe any type of inflamed tissue. Um, and also we can use it topically outside if there's ever any irritation. Um, I also enjoy using horsetail or equisetum. Again, not the actual horse's tail, but a plant <laughs> called equisetum, which is rich in silica, which is very healing to the urinary tract. Um, and it's also nutritive, diuretic, but it also helps with any incontinence issues because it helps to strengthen tissues. Um, but another caveat to that is that it also has some uh, impact for bronchial issues too. So patients have a combination of things. This is something that can be um, added in to nourish as well. Nettles is another um, herb that I enjoy using. Um, it has a nourishing effect, a uh, nutritive antimicrobial. It's another tonic herb. Um, it's very helpful for, um, as a, a, a nutritive, meaning that it's a plant that has natural amounts of high nutrients in it. So it's very rich in iron, vitamin C. It's also a blood purifier as well. Um, helpful for any for many types of kidney trouble, especially those where you know we might be looking at urinary tract infections or UTIs that have that, that also have a flank pain or back aches as well. Um, other herbs of note are going to be like our uva ursi or beriberi. Um, the Oregon grape is a really good antimicrobial. I actually have been rep recommending that instead of golden seal because golden seal is um, endangered right now. It's been over harvested. So golden seal, everyone knows golden seal along with echinacea for anti anything antimicrobial, but Oregon grape is a really good alternative and uh, economically better um, 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 for than golden seal is right now. So Oregon grape is going to be better for nature. Um, corn silk is very, has a diuretic action and is very nourishing as is dandelion. Uh, juniper berries um, contains high amounts of essential oils. So I often call that travelers or hikers best friend. So um, 
if you have any type of uh, acute UTI, um, you can chew on juniper berries. They have a strong juniper taste, but um, just, a, just to let you know, it, it works very preventatively. So someone who might have IC or um, consistent urinary tract infections, this is something that's good to take preventatively. Um, just a little caveat to that is that if you do take, if you do chew juniper berries, they contain essential oils. So about six hours after you, it will, urine will smell like juniper. Do not, <laughs> that's only one thing to that. And also parsley is a very good antimicrobial, helps with blood pressure regulation. It's a diuretic and it's very helpful for um, people who may have interstitial just um, cystitis. Parsley is a very amazing herb for that. It's uh, also called petrosolinum. And adaptogens. Um, often in, um, uh, in Chinese medicine, but also in like just the conventional approach to um, kidney issues, it's important to get important sleep at night. In Chinese medicine, kidney chi is very much connected with the sleep cycle. Um, so it's important to have that balance at night. And this is very important, but hard sometimes as a lot of kidney patients will often deal with insomnia. So if you're awake all night and can't, and you know, and you send to sleep during the day, it's just difficult. Um, I often recommend um, using adaptogenic herbs that just help to regulate your, 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 um, your rhythm at night, um, especially if you find that you're waking up consistently between two and four in the morning. Um, so again, adaptogens have gone by other names, but they just help your body adapt and thrive um, to stress and they help to, re to regulate your adrenals, which are your adrenal glands or your two glands that sit on top of your kidney. And they're responsible for creating certain hormones such as cortisol that, that influence your body's stress response. And we often, if we're ill or out of balance, this response will be off and that will hinder our ability to heal. So some adaptogens that I may recommend um, are, for good examples are ashwagandha, um, or its other word is withania. That's a very strong adaptogen that we might use. Shatavari is one of my favorite um, adaptogens from Indian, um, more Ayurvedic medicine especially if there's uh, a, a women's health component. So whereas uh, ashwagandha is all often for, lumped in for everyone, we'd say Shadavari is the queen of stress because it's very much linked to women's health as well. So um, also holy basil, Siberian ginseng. Um, I love using medicinal mushrooms. So things like reishi, cordyceps, shiitake, um, these are gonna be very popular, very, very big ones to use that popular ones that I'll use in the practice. And most of these adaptogens also have an anti-inflammatory effect. They're kidney tonic um, adaptogens. Most of them will be kidney tonic as well, meaning that they help the, to nourish um, that system. And also they tend to be hepatoprotective too. So often if the kidney is out of source, then we also want to monitor liver function as well. So this is another way we can kind of um, really have a synergistic effect. And these are just some examples of adaptogens that just are very helpful. So like we talked about ashwagandha, ginseng, astragalus, bacopa, which is a really good adaptogen, especially if there's some cognitive issues going on. So if there's brain fog, memory focus, that helps as well. Again, we talked about holy basil, reishi, and rhodiola when energy is down as well. And a popular way that I might use adaptogens is to add them in um, like a hot, um, dairy-free hot chocolate. So I'll use a cacao powder, a little bit of reishi mushroom powder, um, cashew or al uh, milk alternative and add some ashwagandha powder, a shot of ari powder, depending on what I'm looking for and a few drops of stevia to make a really nourishing, um, healthy drink. And I'll send this to everyone as well. You have a copy, I'll send this to everyone too. Sometimes I'll use a broth to get a lot of those different herbs in. So I might create something called a repose broth, which will contain lots of different herbs, different nutrients, um, fruits, uh, vegetables, things that are gonna help to stimulate overall function. And again, like overall health, when it comes to this oak kidney overall, you always wanna make sure you're staying hydrated. You wanna favor more temperate, tepid, warmer room temperature liquids. This just comes from Chinese medicine. Um, favor beans and lentils, nourishing teas, like the ones that we mentioned, uh, nettles, horsetail, dandelion, renal. Uh, uh, and um, these are just other things that other, I'm gonna talk about just three other conditions that often come up. 
um, that I see in practice. So if we are dealing with urine, uh, renal stones, which can be incredibly painful, you know, conventional medicine will often have us use surgery or ultrasounds to break up or medications. Um, and you always wanna make sure that you, if you're using, uh, focus on herbs that help overall tone and repair any damaged tissue and to decrease spasms. So I might recommend things like gravel root or soothing, those soothing herbs like marshmallow and corn silk and horsetail. Um, there are some nutrients that we'll often recommend such as arginine, which helps to dilate blood vessels just to help improve flow everywhere. Um, and also things like nettles and licorice, which helps to decrease inflammation. Look at foods that help to balance the pH so that way it doesn't happen again. And again, castor oil packs, which uh, involve using uh, castor oil, not internally, but you use castor oil on your abdomen to help to stimulate a healing response and also fiber as well. And again, you know, last with cystitis, bladder support, probably the most common thing that I'll see in practice, um, you know, urinary tract infections impact about around half of all women at some point in our lives. Um, and it's usually women, women more than men just because of our urethra sizes um, and um, more acute versus chronic. 25% of us will have recurrence. Um, many cause, and that was a typo, caused by E. coli. Um, and there are certain risk factors that are associated to that. So we're most likely to have more uh, bladder infections when during pregnancy, if there's low estrogen medications and also any type of obstructions, if we have a history of obstructions um, and we're more likely to um, impact sufferers uh, with cystitis if you're underwhelmed uh, with and understressed. So that's where adaptogens come in. Um, you know, during an uh, acute situation and also for preventative, I often recommend cranberry and D-mannose, which is a, D-mannose is a sugar that just helps to bind all those um, pathogens and takes it away from the body. We talked about the juniper berries, juniper berries before. Um, sometimes I'll use an herb called kava, which helps to um, decrease any type of spasms. And it also helps for, um, as an analgesic, um, so it helps to relieve any type of pain too. It helps to relax blood vessels too and relax tissue. Um, and we wanna always increase foods that contain sulfur. So our smelly foods actually helps because the smelliness gives it its antimicrobial fat. So, and also helps to support the formation of uh, connective tissue, which is very important, especially when we're dealing with inner IC. Um, so garlic, onions, leeks, scallions, these are gonna be our power foods. Um, Certain, sometimes I'll use homeopathic remedies. I love working with homeopathic medicines. So homeopathic remedies basically use dilute substances to help stimulate a, a healing response in the body. Um, so there are certain remedies that we use. We use them on a symptom basis. So if someone has burning sensations, lots of increased flake pain or very much fatigue, we might look at causticum or urtica if there's a lot of itchiness associated with it. Um, if there's like an urging sensation, it feels like you have to go, but you can't during an attack, then we might look at cantharis. Again, we sit down and look at that symptom picture and we go through and see what homeopathic remedy might be best for them in that moment. It's always good to work with uh, a professional that's, that knows about homeopathic remedies. Again, a sitz bath is really soothing, especially a sitz bath with, with certain herbs, a lot of those herbs that we mentioned. Um, and again, you want to add, avoid any type of foods that are gonna cause more problems. So dairy, wheat, processed foods, sugar, anything that's gonna cause more inflammation in the body and also probiotics. They, probiotics help with gut health, but also there are certain probiotics that we'll use for um, vaginal support as well and for bladder support too. Again, we have beneficial microbes all over our body, in our body. We wanna make sure we have a proper balance too. And you know, this is a, a tea that I might recommend for an acute attack. Um, and these are a combination of herbs with, that are astringent, they're antimicrobial, they're soothing, um, and they have a balance of, like in Chinese medicine, it's, it's important to have a proper balance of certain flavors to help, to help with any type of condition or, or nourish the body state. So I'll often recommend a combination of uh, dried cranberries and blueberries along with that Oregon grapefruit and corn silk and a little bit of nettles, hibiscus, dandelion, and uva ursi, just to make the tea taste a little better. Um, and um, usually have that simmer a little bit of hot water and steep it throughout the day until you feel better. Um, so that's another way, that's one of the ways that I use herbs. 
And so I keep this, um, again, like when it comes to kidney health, I, I do want to stress that it's important to, you know, there's lots of natural solutions out there. It's important to find a practitioner. If you are interested in natural medicine, don't try to go it yourself. Don't doc doctor Google it. Don't try to look everything online and try it yourself. Find a knowledgeable practitioner, whether they're an integrative medicine doctor, um, an acupuncturist or Chinese medicine doctor, if you want to go that way, a naturopathic doctor, you want to make sure it's someone that's knowledgeable so that way you can achieve the health goals that you want and that they are working in conjunction with your health team too. Because it's important to, you know, whoever um, you're, you're seeing um, your, as your primary care doctor, your um, urologist, kidney function doctor, doctor you want to make your um, dialysis team, you always want to make sure that you have a team on your side in there everyone is informed of everything that's going on because you want to make this, that's one of the strategies, number one strategies for success and support is that you never want to try to go it around along, alone. You want to always make sure you have a great, excellent support team. <laughs> that is excellent. Michelle, <laughs> I really appreciate all that information. Yeah. A lot of it I was not aware of and I, um, took a lot of notes today. So this is very good for me too. I really appreciate it. Yes, of um, course. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, see if you're interested in exploring them with me. We only have a few minutes though, and some of these might take a lifetime to figure out. <laughs> what about Panchakarma and kidney disease, the Ayurvedic medicine that they have? I was curious. I went to do some Ayurvedic medicine and they were talking about that. And um, I just didn't know if my kidney function could handle it or not. And I know that they say they only go, they only take you as far as your body and your mind and your spirit will allow you to, but I still was on the cautious side. Okay. So with Panchakarma, I, I do admit that I'm not that well-versed in that side of Ayurvedic medicine. So I wouldn't be able to guide you that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. Now, as far as Western medicine goes and everything that's going on with Western medicine right now and with the nurses, you may know some of the issues that's going on with the nurses right now. Some people are saying it's a witch hunt. Where do you see that we can go from where we are right now with Western medicine? Because I have been on both sides of it. And I'll be honest, I'm glad I don't have to do physical therapy right now in the setting that we're in right now. Um, it's not patient related. It's more all about the documentation and covering our butts and doing tests when the doctors come in and involved and they just don't have the time to explore our needs and to listen to us. Because most of the time I found with my patients in physical therapy, if I listened to them, they would tell me what they needed. So do you have any aha moments for the rest of us on those thoughts that you may have? I mean, from being in both, both sides of that, it is a challenge. I feel that in order for anything to be to change, it would be for alternative practice practice practitioners to have more of an integrative approach with medical doctors, with nurses that are going to be open minded to having us as a part of their team and as a resource. Yes. Um, I was actually just having this discussion with a student the other day who wanted to be in, come in is in the path to become a naturopathic doctor, and for just she wanted my advice on you know the state of of medicine is that. The, the reality is, is that a lot has changed since I opened my practice eight years ago. A lot has a lot has changed, um, and like more patients are wanting more of that alternative healthcare, that more alternative need. And I feel that medical, you know, conventional medicine medical doctors are going to have to be able to open up to that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it's mainly just to have that com be able to have that conversation with patients, where patients don't have to feel like they're hiding that they're taking supplements or hiding that they're taking right. botanicals. Um, exactly. And acknowledging that as, you know, in conventional medicine, as conventional, you know, medical doctors, DOs, well, you know, medical doctors don't really have that expansive training in nutrition. They don't have expansive mm -hmm. training in botanicals and no expansive training in alternative modalities. It's important to have someone in your referral network and be open with a naturopathic, a licensed naturopathic mm -hmm. doctor or a chiropractor who's knowledgeable or an integrative med medical doctor who you can refer people to because you're acknowledging that you don't have that information or you don't mm -hmm. have that time to spend with patients um, because exactly. of how, again, everything's insurance driven. And because things yeah. are insurance driven, that has been, that's the biggest thing on why doctors don't 
want to, aren't able to spend that time. I've, I've known many medical doctors who wish they could spend more time with patients, but yes. because yes. they yes. are limited by a certain number of patients that they have to see a day uh, and by ins what insurance protocols and will bill for, for that kind of stuff, that's mm -hmm. the biggest holdup. But overall, I think if naturopathic doctors and other alternative health professionals were able to be doctors would be, conventional doctors would be open-minded to that and see mm -hmm. us as part of that healthcare team. So that way, if they, you know, qu patients have questions about these alternative modalities, you can refer them to somebody who is knowledgeable, who will support your, your practices as well. So yes. I think the only way that's going to change is that if the conventional medicine model is going to be open to alter to skilled alternative practitioners to come yeah. into that flow. And I think we're not there now, but I, I hope we soon will be because again, there's been a shift in what patients want and patients want more of that. And I think we've seen even a more sh of a, a larger shift since COVID as well. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it's going to, so yeah, too. yeah. I hope yeah. I answered that for you. Yeah. Yes, yes. I know a lot of the uh, Western medicine doctors now, I, I forgot what it's called, but you can get like a membership to their clinic. Maybe I'm not describing it correctly, but you can pay what is that called? There's a word yes. for it. It's um, you know concierge or direct yes. care medicine. I'm actually yes. at a concierge direct care medicine practice yes. in, in Raleigh. That's where yes. I'm at right now. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of doctors are starting to head in that direction. I just don't yeah. know how that coincide, coincides with um, having privileges at hospitals because, you know, admitting patients to hospitals. I'm not quite sure how that would work out in that kind of setting because mm -hmm. that's not my area of expertise, but yeah. Um, are you able to bring up a beautiful picture of me? Because I can see you, and I think everybody's gotten this contact information for you. Can you help me navigate before we go sure. how to bring me back into the picture? And if not, that's okay. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. Let me see. Yes, how about there now? There we go. Yay! Yeah. yeah. So um, I am just super excited about this. I hope that we can all embrace this. When I say all, I mean patients, doctors, nurses, and the whole realm of people, um, even in physical therapy, occupational and um, speech therapy, the more holistic approach that we can take to these medicines, I think the better. That's my personal opinion. And um, coming up, because we don't have too much time, I'm just going to tell people that next month, in June, I have a nurse practitioner that has retired at the moment from treating clients right now in uh, clinic kidneys and at the hospital, and she is going to talk to us. I believe she's going to talk to us about her experience with COVID on both sides of it, and she has had it twice. So that's what led her to saying, okay, I can step away from patient care right now, and I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm giving the guidance to go ahead and take care of myself so I don't have to take care of everybody else, my family and myself, which I think is just so wise. So that's as far as we've gotten right now. As far as the summer comes, I think I will still hold these, but I don't know how many people are going to come and listen because a lot of people have their kids out of school and involved in vacations, those kind of things. So I still want to keep it going, but the next time after June, I'll invite more people to come in and um, chat with us will be in um, September. So with that being said, I think we're getting to the last minutes here. Is there anything else that you wanted to add, Ms. Drains? Um, I think that's all I had just that, you know, that's awesome. That, yeah. Piggybacking off the last conversation is that really, I think there needs to be a combination of just, you know, yes. it's not both sides. It's just all of us together, helping the mm -hmm. one patient coming together. Awesome. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop the recording, but I want to keep you online just for a minute with me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay thanks guys. Have a good night. I hope people Thank can you. watch the replay. <laughs>